There were ancient human species that interbred with each other. Hobbit humans that were about three feet tall and a big stocky ancestor that had a bigger brain than the modern human. This are just a few of the shocking things we still don't know about the history of humanity. Primitive humans all descended from monkeys, who were our common ancestors. If you'd want to know more about these old folks, some of whom you may not even know, keep watching to the very end. Before we go directly to the different humans that existed in prehistory, let's first talk about what species are. A species is one of the most basic ways that biology classifies things. It is a collection of organisms that share characteristics and are able to reproduce to produce offspring that are healthy. If two creatures are of the same species, they may breed and produce offspring that are capable of reproducing farther down the line. To categorize and comprehend the many forms of life on Earth, scientists use the concept of a species. It helps us group and organize different living things by the things they have in common and how they evolve together. Different sizes and degrees of complexity are possible for species. These living creatures might be humans, plants, animals, or even microbes like bacteria and mushrooms. Distinctive morphological, genetic, and behavioral characteristics distinguish several species from one another. It may be challenging to identify and classify species, particularly when dealing with creatures that reproduce alone or when attempting to distinguish between species that are very similar. To determine the boundaries between species under these circumstances, scientists use a variety of techniques, including genetic tests, anatomical traits, and biological considerations. Apes diverge from a common ancestor some 6 million years ago, giving rise to the first Homo species. In the past, people gave up the long arms that monkeys had in favor of longer legs. It was no longer possible for them to swing on trees but they could stand up, walk, and move into new environments outside of the forest. Early humans' brains grew until we could use complicated tools to hunt big animals, start fires, and build homes. About 300,000 years ago, Homo sapiens first appeared. Once there was Habilis, then there was Erectus, then there was Heidelbergensis, then there was Floresiensis, then there was Neanderthalensis, then there was Naledi, and finally, there was Luzinensis. Our species is the center of attention. Despite the fact that many of these others have been there for far longer, it's time for the family to gather together now. Homo sapiens is a scientific designation for modern humans. Within the genus Homo, it is the only existing species of humans. Some species such as Homo erectus and Neanderthals have already become extinct. Our distinct physical and mental characteristics that distinguish humans from other animals are what constitute Homo sapiens. Homo sapiens as a species has some significant characteristics that have aided in our evolution. Big brains, two-legged gait, intricate tool construction, multilingualism, and social organization are a few of these. These characteristics have enabled humanity to flourish and endure in many different environments around the globe. Africa is where Homo sapiens first appeared about 300,000 years ago. We dispersed over the globe throughout time. The process of migration and settlement resulted in the formation of many racial and cultural groupings. With almost 7 billion individuals on Earth, Homo sapiens is now the most prevalent species. Humans have developed intricate societies and strong tools, and the planet's ecosystems have been significantly impacted by what humans have done. Our innate intelligence allows us to create works of art, novels, music, and scientific, technological, and medical breakthroughs. In 1960, a group of scientists found the preserved remains of an early person in Tanzania. The skulls of the skeletons were little bigger than apes. Scientists called this species handyman because they thought these individuals made the thousands of stone tools that were found nearby. 
Many people believe that the first Homo species to diverge from apes was Homo habilis. This occurred approximately 2.4 million years ago. Habilis weighed barely 70 pounds, according to reports, and was between 3 and 4 feet tall. We also know that Homo habilis made complicated tools, like stones that were used to kill animals. It was almost a million years before any other species of our genus lived. The first known Homo sapiens to stand upright was unsurprisingly Homo erectus. Unlike apes, erectus exhibited traits that are characteristic of modern humans. The legs were long enough to allow it to run and walk rather than climb trees and the arms were shorter than its upper body. Homo erectus is the first known human with a skull that is much bigger than apes. They also had smaller teeth. The second change probably helped Homo erectus eat meat and proteins that were easy to digest. This would help meet the extra food needs that come with being taller and having a bigger brain. In fact, scientists found campfires and hearths near the remains of Homo erectus, which suggests that they were the first humans to try cooking. Cooking is a truly human activity that gave us access to food that was easy for our bodies and brains to digest, which helped them grow. The species Homo erectus did very well. It took them almost nine times as long to rule the world as our present ruler does. Our knowledge of Homo rudolfensis, a person that was discovered close to Lake Rudolph of Kenya, a place that is now known as Lake Turkana, is pretty limited. The fact that Homo rudolfensis' cranium was much larger than Homo habilis is evidence that the former was a human species. However, given the similarity of the hip and shoulder, other researchers believe it more closely belongs to the smaller and related genus Australopithecus that is linked to Homo. About 700,000 years ago, Homo heidelbergensis, also known as Homo rhodesiensis, lived in Europe and Eastern Africa. It is believed that this broader and smaller individuals were the first to dwell in frigid climates. In addition to Homo heidelbergensis, bones from rhinoceroses, horses, elephants, hippopotamuses were discovered. This people were perhaps the first to hunt larger game with spears since they lived in close proximity. In order to remain warm, this people also built basic dwellings out of wood and rock and learned how to handle fire. The Homo sapiens species is believed to have originated from the African branch of Homo heidelbergensis. The bones discovered in 2003 on Indonesia's island of Flores are the sole known remains of Homo floresiensis. Near the remnants of Homo floresiensis were discovered stone tools, small elephants, and Komodo dragons. This paints a clear image of the island life this little people lived. The fact that Homo floresiensis lived alone probably made its brains and body size small, about 3 feet, 6 inches for a female. In fact, its small size fits with the biological theory of isolated dwarfism, which says that animals get smaller when their population can only live on a small island. It is thought that Homo floresiensis made stone tools and killed small elephants. The elephant's small size is another case of island dwarfism. It is still not known how Homo floresiensis got to its named island Flores since the closest island is 6 miles away and the seas are rough. Say hi to our closest cousins, the Neanderthals. We are taller and thinner than Neanderthals, but their brains were the same size or even bigger than ours. The Neanderthals had a hard life. The fact that bones are broken all over shows that they didn't always succeed when hunting big animals. In Europe and Southeastern and Central Asia, they also lived in places that were very cold. To get through it, they built shelters and made fires. As well as making clothes, they used complicated tools like bone sewing needles. A lot of different sites have turned up dozens of fully detailed Neanderthal skeletons. This shows that the Neanderthals buried their dead and marked their graves. 
This shows that Neanderthals did the kinds of symbolic actions that are linked to the mental processes that lead to language. The way they were buried also helped modern humans. Scientists have been able to get Neanderthal DNA from so many whole bodies. Researchers used that to find evidence that humans and Neanderthals mated at one point. The Homo naledi were a small group of humans that lived in South Africa. Since they were only found in late 2015, we don't know much about Homo naledi. Scientists found an amazing 1,550 specimens from at least 15 different people during a single trip. It looks like this Homo naledi were pretty small, about 4 feet 9 inches long. Although a lot of human fossils were found during the dig, no tools or other animals were found with Homo naledi, so the experts still don't know how they lived. In 2019, scientists went to a small cave on an island in the north of Indonesia. After finding Homo floresiensis, experts began to wonder if there were other islands with people living there as well. When they completed their labor, they sort of struck gold. The only human bones they discovered were fragments of a thigh, two fingers, three feet, and seven teeth. Nevertheless, due to its small size and secluded habitat, the authorities were certain that nobody else was familiar with this species. It was discovered on the Philippine island of Luzon, thus the name Luzonensis. There is little fossil evidence to support the hypothesis that Homo luzonensis is not a distinct species from the well-known island resident Homo floresiensis, which is why some experts are skeptical of the findings. The discovery raised further concerns regarding the manner in which these individuals arrived on the islands. There were 21 distinct kinds of early humans, according to the majority of scientists today. Regarding the relationship between this species and which ones went extinct on their own, scientists cannot agree. Most early human species probably did not leave any living descendants. Researchers also dispute the names and classifications for the many early humans as well as the reasons for the evolution and ultimate extinction of each species. Through the examination of artifacts, genetic evidence, and other scientific data, scientists are piecing together the story of human evolution. They search for patterns in the evolution of our bodies, DNA, and behaviors to understand the origins and evolution of our species. Homo sapiens Species are a useful framework for organizing the many branches of the human genealogical tree, the intricate web of relationships between our hominin ancestors and other hominids sheds light on our evolutionary past. Overall, the concept of a species helps us understand the incredible diversity of life on our planet and provides a framework for studying and classifying organisms.